everybody. Welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, as always, Tommy Brzee. It is Monday, July 15th around here, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to start talking a little bit about the SEC Media Days. They get underway today in Dallas. We will break down everything you need to know, some big-time talking points, the schedule, everything that you guys need to know going into these Media Days. Then we'll get into Kalen DeBoer and the incredible job that he has done at Bama since he's taken over in January. Everything is moving in the right direction for Alabama right now. So we'll break down why this year is so important for him and why it feels like they might just be picking up right where they left off with Nick Saban. Then we'll get into one of the biggest things that will be a huge thing to watch throughout this year, which is essentially luck or wins in those one score games that are decided by just a little bit of luck. So we'll break down some of the teams that I think Could get some luck this year, some teams that I think could not get some luck this upcoming year. Then we'll get into the most important freshmen in the Big 12. We've done the SEC and the Big 10. We'll get into the Big 12 today, and then we'll finish it off with Monday questions. And we're going to talk about the Texas Longhorns. A ton of questions around that university, around that team going into the season, and I have about four of them today that we'll break down. But before we jump in, I do want to remind you all, we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show, and the best way for you all to get your question on the screen, we can have a fun back and forth here is to use the tip and donation link at the bottom of the screen gsmcpodcast.net it's a huge help not only to us here at the network but to you all you get to kind of have a fun interactive experience here and that's always good for the both of us again that's gsmcpodcast.net But let's jump right in because the SEC media days are getting underway today over in Dallas and there's a ton to talk about. There's no two ways about that. We're only 40 days out from the season officially kicking off and there's going to be a ton of things that come out of this week up in Dallas that are going to be really, really interesting to watch. So let's jump in here and what I want to start with is just the schedule for this week. Uh, We're going to start today. We get LSU, Ole Miss, two teams that are going into this year with a lot of question marks, but also a lot of hype. There's definitely, especially Ole Miss, it'll be very interesting to hear from Lane Kiffin today. We'll get Shane Beamer. We'll get Clark Lee today. So definitely a ton going in. We'll get those players as well from those teams. So cannot wait to hear from some of those guys. Then we'll get into, we'll have Georgia and Kirby on the second day. Obviously will be the main event, but also Brent Venables making his appearance uh, for the very first time. And then Missouri and Tennessee, two teams with a lot riding on this year, a lot going into this year that will be there as well. Well, Wednesday is a huge day as well. We have Bama starting it off. Everyone's going to be asking Kalen Abore a ton of questions. Billy Napier has questions on the other side of things. You know, how are you going to handle the season? How uncertain is your future? That type of thing. And then we'll get into Mississippi State, a team that is kind of going to be on the bottom part of this conference, but definitely a very interesting project this upcoming year for Jeff Levy. Then we'll get into Texas, obviously. Texas and Steve Sarkeesian coming in for the first time. That will be a huge event. There's no two ways about that. And then the last day you have Arkansas, Auburn, Kentucky, Texas a and So Sam Pittman will get some questions about his job and his security. Hugh Freeze about how they're kind of gearing up over there at Auburn, Kentucky, and AM going into years with some very, very interesting expectations, I would say. But let's get into some of the biggest talking points for this. And the biggest one has been the biggest one the entire offseason, and that is. Nick Saban is no longer going to be at these SEC media media days. It is the first time since 2007, 2006, I think 2007 since he's been there. So very, very weird. There's no two ways about that. Kalen DeBoer will be there in his stead. And it's a new era of Bama football. There's been a ton of reports about how certain things are different. The practices are a little bit less intense. There is some music playing. There's a little bit more of a relaxed nature around that program. And it'll be fascinating to hear from the head guy. Um, He took the job on January 12, 2024, and since that day, he's just been off running. Um, There were a couple of bumps with some members moving to the NFL, his staff members, but overall, he's got through that, and he's just done an incredible, incredible job. They've been adding just incredible amounts of recruits this upcoming cycle, currently sit atop the rankings for the on three, and we'll get into that a little bit uh, in next segment, but... The thing that everyone was worried about, kind of including myself to a certain degree, was recruiting, and he has subsided that uh, plenty for every Bama fan and has made that worse for every fan that was hoping that that was the case. Um, But every time I hear him speak, I get more confident about this team and this program going forward, and I'm sure this week will be no different, honestly. Um, But it'll be interesting to hear how he's handling the transition for taking over for the grace of all time. Um, But then... Another obvious one is Texas and OU making their very, very first um, 
introduction to the SEC, there will be a plenty of questions. I, I, I promise you that about this coach, uh, these coaches, and how they're preparing for this upcoming season. And if Quinn Ewers gives us a little bit of something like he gave us back the Panning, Manning Passing Academy, we'll have plenty to talk about, that's for sure. But at the end of the day, there's going to be so many questions about, you know, how is Texas heading into the season? How is OU heading into the season? We'll get to hear from Quinn Ewers. We'll get to hear from Jade Barron, the leaders of either side of that ball, as well as Kelvin Banks, a fantastic offensive lineman for them. So just cannot wait to hear from a lot of those guys. Frankly, I think Jade Barron, outside of Quinn Ewers, might be the single most important player for Texas this year if they want to succeed. So it's going to be awesome to hear from those guys. And then on the Oklahoma side of the ball, you have questions at the line of scrimmage. There's no two ways about that. There will be no representatives there, which would kind of uh, would be a very cool thing to hear how those rooms are coming along. But the group that they have are great. It's the leaders of this team, Jackson Arnold, Billy Bowman, and Danny Stutzman. Danny Stutzman and Billy Bowman are two of the best at their positions in the entire country and will definitely be huge for this team this year. So just cannot wait to see what they have in store. And then you get to kind of the awkward part of this week. Uh, Billy Napier and Sam Pittman walk in with a ton of questions about their jobs. Uh, Going into this year, you would have to think at least one of these guys is likely out of a job at the end of the year, possibly uh, both of these guys, depending on how the season goes for them. But it's going to be really interesting to see how they're looking at this season, how they kind of see the expectations for this season, and if those are reciprocated in the fan base and in the media, because that's really going to define a lot of this. You know, how do we look at Florida this year? Is six wins enough? Is seven wins enough? Is eight wins enough? Because that will likely define if Billy Napier sticks around for longer than this year. So that'll obviously be a very interesting thing to watch. We likely won't get a ton of big time quotes out of these two, but at the end of the day, it'll be fascinating to see just kind of their demeanor going into this season for sure. Um, The big time thing that I'm watching, maybe closest uh, of all, is all the quarterbacks that will be in attendance. 11 of the 16 teams are sending quarterbacks to Dallas. We're missing out on guys like Connor Wegman and that guy right there, Nico Imaliava. It does stink, I'm not going to lie to you. Not hearing from those guys is not ideal. Um, But at the end of the day, we still have plenty of guys to unpack. Frankly, the biggest surprises to me are no James Pierce for Tennessee, which is very interesting. I thought he definitely would be there. And then no Will Campbell for uh, LSU. I thought he would absolutely be there. So uh, very, very interesting choices there. But at the end of the day, the quarterbacks will not be hard to come by. That's for sure. You will have Carson Beck there, Quinn Ewers, uh, Brady Cook, Jalen Milrow, Jackson Dart. All of these guys will be so interesting to hear from because all of them are expecting the same thing this year. They all want to win an SEC title. They all want to go to a national title. That's what they expect. And frankly, I think all of those teams can do that. Obviously, Missouri is walking a tighter tightrope than a lot of these other teams. But at the end of the day, All of those guys have big-time aspirations for this year, and hearing from them will be very, very interesting, especially someone like Carson Beck and Quinn Ewers and Jackson Dart uh, because of the Heisman hope that they have going into this year. And then the guys I'm really excited to hear from are guys like Peyton Thorne, Graham Mertz, Jackson Arnold. I think all of those guys are going to be super, super um, important this year because I think there's a disruptor among them. I think there's someone in that group that is going to create problems this year, whether it's Graham Mertz winning eight games at Florida and creating problems for some of the guys up top or Peyton Thorne taking down Bama um, in the first year without Saban or Jackson Arnold being a team, being a guy that is protected a little bit better than we than we expect right now and just slings the ball all over the field and becomes one of the best quarterbacks in the conference this year. So there's a ton going into this group in particular because Someone in this group is going to play spoiler. Someone in this group is going to ruin the chances for another team, and it's going to be really, really interesting to watch. But overall, the number one guy that I want to hear from the most is Jalen Milrow. There's no two questions about that. I don't know if there's a person at this meeting outside of maybe Kalen DeBoer that I'm more excited to hear from um, because his connection with Kalen DeBoer, the life after Saban, hearing about how the uh, team is handling that, all of the things that are going into the season for Bama – They all go through this kid. He is the most important player for them. He is maybe the most important player in all the SEC, outside of maybe Carson Beck. But at the end of the day, a very, very important player. And it'll be really interesting to hear how he kind of talks about Kalen DeBoer, how he talks about Nick Sheridan, the OC, how he talks about some of the new changes in the program because 
he's seen it all. He's seen what Saban does. He's seen what uh, Kalen DeBoer does. And it'll be fascinating to see from the leader of this team what it kind of looks like behind the scenes. And then finally, we got to be on the lookout for conference realignment stuff. There is even more smoke around the Big 12 in in, uh, Clemson and Florida State. But at the end of the day, the SEC can pretty much get in whenever they want. And Clemson and Florida State would jump at that opportunity. So maybe there's a little bit of movement here this weekend. Obviously, whenever you have a amalgamation of reporters and decision makers in college football, there's going to be some things that come out. I don't necessarily know what that's going to be. It could be just reaffirming what we heard from Brett McMurphy when he said they are not interested at all. Maybe that's just what we hear, but at the end of the day, we're going to hear something. Um, I, I feel very good about that, whether it's from the SEC or from another conference because of what we hear from the SEC media days. So it'll be really, really interesting to watch that. I think that's something that definitely will be defining in a lot of ways, no doubt about that. Um, and then some other points that are going to be interesting to watch. Kirby Smart will have to address the off-field issues that have been going on at UGA. Definitely will be something that it'll be really interesting to hear what his um, what his answers are to those questions because something has to be done, but I'm sure he feels like he's done just about everything he can. So it'll be really, really interesting to hear from him. And then on top of that, they're trying to bounce back up to the top. So it'll be interesting to hear from him, especially post Saban. They can take this uh, conference by the throat, and it'll be interesting to see what his demeanor is. Guys like Carson Beck and Quinn Ewers walking in with Heisman hopes. We talked about teams with promise this year. Missouri, Tennessee, LSU, Ole Miss will be fascinating to hear from about how they're viewing this upcoming season. And then any news around the house settlement and allocation of revenue sharing is always something we should be on the lookout for and something we will definitely update you with as it comes through. So, Tons of stuff. There's no two ways about that. The SEC media days are always so much fun every single year, and this year is going to be the exact same. There's no two ways about that. It might just be even more explosive than it usually is, but at the end of the day, it's going to be awesome to listen to that, but let's move on. Let's take our first break here. When we come back, we're going to talk about Kalen DeBoer. He's been doing just absolutely incredible things at Alabama for the about six or seven months that he's been the head coach there but that doesn't change that everything is working exactly how he wants it to and this year is going to be a really really interesting case study to see what the future is under Nick uh, after Nick Saban so we'll break all that down right after this so stick with us <laughs> 